Well, hi everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, many of us baby boomers look at our paltry 401ks and our IRAs, and we've vowed to work forever. I mean, what else is there? Now, that could be a problem, though. According to the Schwartz Center for Economic Policy Analysis in New York, which warns a crowded labor market will limit our ability to amass the savings that we need uh, to work, you know, past 65. So, you know, with that in mind, we invited to our show someone who offers advice and encouragement to more than 3 million entrepreneurs every week about how to succeed as an entrepreneur. Now, what we're talking about here is the option of working for yourself rather than finding a job. Our guest is Melinda Emerson, who is the publisher of several books, including Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, and she just completed her second book, Fix Your Business 90-Day Plan to Get Back Your Life and Reduce Chaos in Your Business. Now, I am really looking forward to talking with Melinda, and we'll do that in just a moment. Let you know that this is part of the Plus 50 Good Life Movement, a project of the BloomerBoomer.com publication. We'll be back with Melinda Emerson, publisher of several books, including Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. Is Melinda Emerson, also known as the Small Biz Lady. Melinda, thanks for joining us. I'm so happy to be here with you. Well, you know, I, I presume the, the first thing to consider is, uh, you know, what does someone want from, from a business? Now, that might not be enough for long-term savings. Well, I don't know about that because a lifestyle business to me is somebody making under a million dollars in revenue. And I'm like this, if you're making $600,000 a year at 30% profitability, that's probably better than you was doing in corporate America. So I don't know that I would necessarily uh, poo-poo a lifestyle business because 95% of all small businesses won't gross over a million in revenue. You know, so I think that uh, we, we have to get out of, uh, you know, what our success metrics are and just really think about what you want and why you want it. You know, when you start a business, that's the first decision that you have to make for yourself. And then after you decide, OK, what I really want to do is start this business. Then the second thing you got to do is figure out how you're going to pay for it. Right. Because the money to start your business is going to come from your right or your left pocket. <laughs> Banks do not loan money to start up businesses. So you got to figure that out. Um, and but the good thing about being a baby boomer is is that you do tend to have more resources and more assets that you can pull from to actually get the money to start your business um that's true and, and you don't have uh kids around and maybe some of the other right uh, requirements. You're, not paying, you're not paying college tuition hopefully you cut everybody off your payroll right you know so you, you know if you're in a position where you know you've got time and you've certainly got expertise at that point in your career, you know, starting a business is, is really a great option. And the fastest growing segment of people starting businesses in the U S right now are baby boomers, really? particularly baby boomer women. Absolutely. So, that. um, uh, you know, and, and, but after you figure out, you know, how you're going to pay for this new business, then the third thing you've got to figure out is what skills you have and what skills you need to learn to run your particular business. So what I advise people a lot is to go work part-time for a business like the one they want to start. I don't believe in people starting restaurants because they like to eat, right? I want you to start a restaurant because you know something about running a restaurant. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> yeah, and then, you're right. And then after that, you've got to figure out who your paying customer is. Because a lot of times people get excited about their website, their logo, the invitations to their grand opening event. And they could not tell you if their life depended on it, who is their niche target customer. If everybody can use your product or service, nobody will. So you have to get real, real clear about who you're chasing. What are you going to spend your marketing dollars on to attract to your business? Ah, and good then, point. So that is, you know, know your niche before you, uh, before you get out and, and launch it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then after you figure all that stuff out, then it's time to start your business. I mean, it will, no, actually, that's when it's time to write your business plan. Now, I, you know, some people feel like, you know, you, you, do you need a 40 page manifesto? No. But do you need 10 good pages that are going to help you in your mind think through how your business is going to run? You know, how are you going to get the phone ring? What are you going to do when the phone rings? How are you going to get the product or service to the person? Who are you going to hire to work for you? You know, these are all the things you got to think through and then how you're going to grow. You know, what is your end goal with this business? 
And then um, the sixth thing that I like to tell people is, I believe in people starting businesses as side hustlers. I don't believe in people quitting a job to start a business. That's crazy. You know, you really need 12 to 18 months for your business to get to the point where it's breaking even, let alone replace your corporate salary. Yeah, so that's, just that's a good point. I like the side hustle. And, and, and wouldn't you agree that, uh, that the uh, internet, which enables virtual sales and sourcing as well as employment has made uh, those kind of lone wolf enterprises easier it's also uh makes, absolutely yeah, starting I mean, running a business less physically taxing too well i don't know about that because it's real work no matter how you do it well, i mean it but you, it's a lot of but, work but you have to think about if you're starting an e-commerce business that's something you absolutely can do on your evenings and weekends that does not require you to quit your job to go do that the only time you would have to leave your job is if you were starting a business that was a, a direct conflict or interest with your day job you know so yeah. those are the things that that you would have to look at other than that side hustle is the way to go until you're actually making real money yeah and then step off from that job you know and i think some people feel as long as i can make a living you know i'm, I'm not looking to get rich we say i have worked so hard you know my whole life you know i don't want to work more than say 20 hours a week right now then you might want to go work part-time in somebody else's business <laughs> because when you start a business you're gonna go back to you know 10 to 14 hour days easy i, I mean, like your hard advice you know and and you're not you're not being you're pandering or uh making it sound too easy which i think is really a good idea no i mean it's it's real work and, and it, it the thing you got to think about is is that entrepreneurs live how most people won't so they can live how most people can't and what that means is that you're gonna have to recoil your lifestyle a little bit to get this business off the ground you know you're probably not going to get a new car every two years anymore you might need to go find the shoe cobbler and get some shoes resold as opposed to just going out and grabbing some new ones because this business is going to become your new baby it's going to consume your time your energy and your money so you really have to be mentally prepared for that and some of us live in really nice houses and like to vacation a lot and all this kind of stuff well you've got to recoil some of that in the early days of a business yeah. and most people don't really start showing profit till year three or four of a business yeah so that's a that's really good advice and you know uh melinda i think uh one of the great assets of what i hear you saying is you're giving realistic advice and and that's so important and uh, some good advice might be to uh, i think as you alluded to to start early now i know this one guy and he's been uh, preparing to start his business since the 1980s now that was long before the <laughs> the internet existed and that's when he began collecting vintage musical instruments and then you guess what he got laid off after 24 years and then lo and behold that's what he's doing today right so he's got a great what was he doing his business on ebay or amazon how's he doing his business yeah he's uh he's got his site he's got his website and then he is uh selling them uh through ebay and okay. so the, the two kind of uh support each other well definitely but i mean i don't suggest people plan 24 years to start a business no. <laughs> i think i think 12 to 18 months is good yeah. for you to your plan and certainly my book become your own boss in 12 months and my workbook are you ready to become your own boss really walk you through 12 months before you start your business 11 months before you start your business 10 months i walk you through the action steps that you need to take every month so that you are prepared the day you put out your shingle and say you're open for business yeah hey well listen tell me how did you uh get so turned on to this because you definitely sound passionate about it Oh yeah, listen, uh, my mission is to end small business failure. You know, my nickname is the small biz lady. I became the small biz lady 10 years ago. And really it started because I've been in business almost 20 years. I know that I look very young, but I'm not, I've been in you business. You do, you look great. You look so young. I know, but it's not true. <laughs> I've been in business for 20 years and I started my business because I got my dream job when I was 23 years old. And after a couple of years of working it, it became a nightmare. Right. And I was like, I got to get out of here. Or I'm going to be the big story on action news. I got to go start a business. So literally I had a laptop, a fax machine and a dream. That's what I had. And I came home. I started in the basement of my house. My kid brother moved in with me and became my tenant. I took out a home equity loan. I 
paid off every bill I had and I started my business. I mean, even my car. And that is what I did to get started. And what I tell people all the time is that people who have savings and have assets have options, right? Yes, so absolutely. if somebody lays you off, you'd be like, okay, I'm on to my next adventure. Watch this, yes. you know? What were you um, doing? What kind of work were you doing? I was a television producer. I was I was a line producer. Oh, I, did I see. So you, uh, you were, I guess in a sense, uh, before the... Well, freelancing has been around. You were kind of a gig on on, a, on, on different gigs? Well, no, I was actually a full-time producer at the uh, television station. Oh, yeah. I see, okay, okay. Um, but I just didn't, I mean, it was like, it was the job I always wanted. I was making a lot of money, but I was getting headaches on the way to work oh, in the morning. <laughs> that's well, that's a fantastic story. And then, then what did you end up doing on your own? So my first business I started, um, was a video production company because what would a former television producer do right absolutely no yeah so but as the technology changed you know we morphed so we morphed into eventually a web development and video production company and then in about 2007 i started looking at the industry trends and i realized that social media was going to be the next big thing and we stopped doing websites really stopped doing video and completely focused on social media and I became uh, a really a social media pioneer and how I learned how to be so good with social media is I built my own small biz lady brand and the very first thing I did was I developed this ebook called the 44 things you need to do before you go into business and I put it up on the internet for free for people to just download and I did that because so many of my friends were calling me girl I want to be like you I want to quit my job today I want to be an entrepreneur and I was like wait a minute, you love Prada, you can't quit your job? No, no, no. And so I wrote this ebook, 44 things to do before you go into business. And I gave it away for free for about two years on the internet. Finally, somebody said, why don't you just write a whole book about, you know, how to become your own boss? And literally, um, uh, in 2005, I got pregnant with my son and I ended up on bed rest for six months and I almost completely lost my business because I had built a business that couldn't run without me. But in that time that I had to get on bed rest, I literally started thinking about all the expensive lessons I had learned in my business. And I started writing them down. And lo and behold, you know, uh, two years later, that is what became my manuscript for how to become your own boss in 12 months. But when I originally turned my manuscript into my publisher, it was September 1st, 2008. And do you remember what happened about September Oh 14th? God, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. People's 401ks became 10Ks, oh, right? Oh you know? gee, I, listen, and, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and my publisher called me up and said, listen, thank you so much for being a first time author that turned your book in on time, but we don't think anyone's thinking about entrepreneurship right now. So we're going to shelf your book until March of 2010. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, you know, right. you, so you went through all of that too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 And so literally I became the small biz lady because I was trying to build a brand before my book came out. I see. But who knew that it was like the best branding accident that ever happened to me? You know, I went to Twitter to get my name, Melinda Emerson, and it was taken. And I had to come up with a nickname. Well, I and like your website. It's melindaemerson.com, uh, uh, right? Yeah. Well, I actually, my website is actually Succeed as oh, Your Own okay. Boss. All right. I see. But if you go to melindaemerson.com or if you go to smallbizlady.com, it'll all take you to okay. Succeed as Your Own Boss.com. But it. the point is, is that I had to make it work because yeah. in 2008, you know, banks started taking lines of credit from business owners and, mm -hmm. you know, things were really, really bad. And I had to reinvent while all of that was going on. And so for me, I figured out that the most valuable thing in my business was what I learned from running it. And I said to myself, well, I'm gonna build a business around that. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's how I became. A what a, you know, tough life lessons, but they really do pay off. Uh, it's well, yeah, I mean, now I'm America's number one small business expert. Yeah. <laughs> my brand reaches 3 million entrepreneurs a week online. So I'd say the gamble worked out for me, but it was a lot of hard work because even when I started building my brand as an influencer and someone that gave out advice it took me two years of blogging tweeting answering people's questions live on the internet before anybody paid me any money to do it Gosh. so I, it was really a strategic thing that i did building up my brand and now you know the rest is history the rest is history well listen uh, uh, you know as far as uh, takeaways um obviously uh, you know i want to hear about your book uh, but for folks who, um, you know, they're kind of figuring out what's next, 
uh, is, is, or they want to get into a business now, or, you know, what might be a takeaway that uh, you can share? Well, first of all, I would suggest that they make, uh, you know, a $16 investment and grab my book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, because literally I've written this whole thing down for you. But the next thing I would say is that you really need to think about your life plan. What do you want now and why do you want it? The fact that you hate your job is not a good enough reason to start a business. You really need to be clear about what your purpose is going to be in this business. And then the next thing you got to figure out is how are you positioned financially? You know, do you have a lot of credit card debt? If you do, you got to get rid of that because you're going to need that credit capacity in your business. Because you're not going to be able to go to a business and a, a bank and even get a line of credit till you've been in business for two years and have positive cash flow. So you are going to be funding your business and you are also going to have to figure out how you're going to pay and run your household while you're doing it. And that's a lot of money. So you got to figure that whole thing out and you've got to have a conversation with your spouse and make sure your spouse is on board with all this stuff because, you know, it takes an a, a unsupportive spouse can kill a business faster than a bad marketing plan. Oh, Trust yeah. me. That's so true. I bet there have been a lot of stories on that. So Melinda, uh, tell, uh, tell our viewers how they can find out about you, get more information. Sure. Well, I am the small biz lady online, small B I Z lady, and you can reach me on Twitter, on Facebook, or you can reach my website, which we already said is smallbizlady.com. Go to Amazon, just Google Melinda Emerson, and you'll find Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. Or if you're an existing business, you can check out my new book, Fix Your Business. So, you know, I've got lots of tools and tips and resources. I've written over 5,000 articles about how to start and grow a successful small business. So all you have to do is go check me out at melindaemerson.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Our guest, Melinda Emerson, who has published several books, including Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. Melinda, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you liked the show. I hope you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. The audio version will be available on iTunes and we have some other fabulous guests and shows coming up. Uh, so please check us out and check us out on Facebook at, at bloomerboomer.com. So long.